Touch your neighbor and tell him I got to get into his will. Let me tell you a secret. Let me tell you a secret. God knows what's in store for you before you even ask. But that still shouldn't stop you from asking him. Are, are, are y'all with me? If it's in his will, he already has it for you. But that should not stop you from asking him. James 4, 14 to 15, I just read it a little while ago. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It's even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, what you ought to say is if the Lord will. We shall live and do this or do that. Tomorrow's not promised to you. That's why Jesus says, seek ye first today. In verse 34 of that sixth chapter of Matthew, he said, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Amen. So now, so now what he's saying here, what is James saying? We can ask God in faith, but we have to realize that it will be done only if it's in God's will. How many of us say, well, I'm going to do such and such on tomorrow or on next week. But it seemed like that such and such that we planned didn't turn out that way. How many times we've said, I'm going to talk to so-and-so tomorrow about a certain, so, and, but that person didn't make it till tomorrow. It was not in God's will. Now I have a question for you. Since we have a better understanding of why things happen like they happen, are you willing to accept God's will for your life? Don't answer that yet. No, 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 don't answer yet. I want you to think about what you want in life and if it's God's will for it to be that way. Think about what you want. Think about what you desire. Think about what's on your heart. If, it's God, if, it, if that's what God wants you to have, think about that. But if it's not, are you willing to accept what the Lord has for you? Oh, I love this, this silence in here. Amen. Amen. Because what we may feel to be God's will may be the result of lust or greed. Because some of the stuff we're begging for and asking for that may not be in God's will for us to have. Ooh, it's tight, but it's right. Proverbs 14 and 12 says, there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. We can be doing a lot of stuff and we feel this is what God said. Deke deep, deep quoted that in Sunday school. We can feel that this is the way it should be. God wants this, but it may not be what God's will is. Let me call on an example. Come here, David. David was a man after God's own heart. David knows that the Lord has been good to him. And David wanted to do something for the Lord. So David went and talked to the prophet Nathan and said, you know what? God's been good to me. God has brought me. I killed a bear. I killed a lion. I killed Goliath. God has made me king. I want to do something for God now. I want to build him a house. Nathan said, go ahead. God wants you to do something good for him. Go ahead. But when Nathan went back, the spirit of God came to Nathan and said, uh-uh, go back and tell David. That's not my will. They, David, you, you, you're a man of war. Tell him he's a man of war. It's all good. I thank him for wanting to do that. But he's a man of war. He's got blood on his hands. But what I will do for him, I'll let his son build me a house. Even when we desire to do good a lot of times, it may not be in the will of God. So are you willing to accept God's will for your life? You may want to be healthy and wealthy, but God's will may be for you to be sick and poor. Ooh, boy, I, I like the way y'all looking at me. You may want to have a good marriage, but it may end up getting divorced. 
You may want to have that job with prestige. But the only thing you may be able to get is digging ditches. Ooh, boy. You may desire to have that fine home on the hill, but you may be the only thing that you may be able to get or have is, is, is a little trailer hitch back behind your truck. So are you willing to or can you accept the will that God has for your life? Let me go ahead and close now. I, I, Y'all, 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 y'all done got quiet on me. My brothers and sisters, all I'm trying to tell you is that God's will is not hard to understand. It's just hard for flesh to accept. I think that's good enough to say again. God's will is not hard to understand. It's just hard for flesh to accept. Paul says in, in Romans 7 and 18, Paul says, for I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. The flesh will also want to do what's in our sin nature. But I'm glad that God's Holy Spirit Remind us in Philippians 2.13, for it is God that works in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. I heard Paul write to the church of Rome in 12 and 2. He said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing, glad I got a Bible reading here, here, of your mind to prove what is that, that what is that, that, that right or that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It's, it's, it's what your attitude and how you, how you, how, what the attitude you have in facing life. I am willing to accept what God has for me. A, a, amen. That's why God's will is to do what is pleasing to him and not to our flesh. Bible tells you, as I heard to a close and finish this little Easter speech. The Bible says that Jesus had gone around and preached for three and a half years as disciples following him. He had built up a crowd. Folks believed on him, making his triumphal entry into Jerusalem from Jericho. They were laying palm leaves. We read about this or talked about this in Sunday school, laying palm leaves and, and the clothes in his way as he come riding on a donkey into Jerusalem. They were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna to the highest. Praise the king of Israel who come in the name of the Lord. And Jesus came in and we, we read about that. And they were lifting Jesus up and proud and giving him all the praise. And, and, and a week later, the same folk who were saying Hosanna and praising him were the same ones saying crucify him. There's a word for the church today. When you're doing God's will, people will pump you up and seem like everything is fine. But when God's will start contradicting what they want, They'll turn around and stab you in the back. Can I get a witness in here? The Bible says that Jesus had gotten into Jerusalem and he told the boys, it's time to prepare to have the Lord's Supper. It's time to eat the Passover. So he gave them instructions to tell the man that was carrying a pitcher of water, say the master has use of a need use of the room that you have. And, and he was going to prepare it for the Passover. And the Bible says that when Jesus got in there for the Passover, he began to talk to the boys, began to tell them all sorts of things he began to tell them stuff. And, and he even, John even talks about how he washed their feet and, and he got around to Peter and Peter said, no, Lord, you're not going to wash my feet. And, and Peter and he told Peter, if I don't wash your feet, you won't have anything to do with me. Peter said, Lord, wash my head, wash my hands, wash all of me, Lord. 
He didn't tell them that I'm doing this as an example for you. If you're going to lead, you first got to understand how to serve. Ain't the Lord all right? Yes, yes, yes. He told them that I'm going to be turned over into the hands of sinful men. One of y'all have betrayed me. Peter and John were sitting there. Peter, all the other disciples were saying, Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? And Peter leaned over to John and said, go ahead and ask him who it is. The Bible says that John, who was the beloved disciple, put his head in his bosom and said, Lord, who is it? Jesus says, the one whom I give sup to. And he passed the bowl to Judas Iscariot. One gospel writer said that Judas asked his Lord, is it I? Jesus told him, thou hast spoken. Another one said, whatever you're going to do, go ahead and do it quickly. Ain't my Lord all right? The Bible says that Jesus and the boys finished supper. And after supper, he took some bread and he began to break it. And this is my body that is broken for you on Calvary's hill. In other words, Jesus was saying the punishment that you were to get. I'm going to be your substitute. Ain't my Lord all right? And likewise, he took the cup. And he said that this is my blood that shed for the remission of sin. Ain't my Lord all right? In other words, my blood is going to wash all of your sins away. Ain't my Lord all right? After a while and by and by, I heard that they sung a hymn and then they got up and they went out into the Mount of Olives but in the Mount of Olives there is a garden that is called Gethsemane and when he went to the garden of Gethsemane he took Peter, James and John with him he said boys I want you to come with me and watch over me for a little while I'm going a little distance and say a prayer to the Lord because I know that my time is near. Ain't the Lord all right? I heard the Bible said that Jesus went a stone's throw away and he was so heavy of a burden upon Jesus that he fell down to his knees and sweat came out as blood on him. Ain't my Lord all right? But I heard that Jesus began to pray to the Lord. He said, Lord, if this bitter cup can pass from me, please let it be so. In other words, Jesus was saying, Lord, if I don't have to go through this, please let it be done another way. But I'm so glad that Jesus was obedient to the Spirit of God. He said, Lord, not my will, but thine will be done. If this is the only way that they can live an eternal life, Lord, let your will be done. Ain't my Lord all right? He went back a second time, and the boys were sleeping now. He said, boys, why don't you wake up and watch over me? He went back and prayed another time and said, Father, if this cup can be passed away from me, let it be so, but not my will, but thine will be done. Jesus wanted to make sure <laughs> that this is the way that God did it. <laughs> now we know how we are. <laughs> we'll go to God one or two times, <laughs> but we'll ask him the same thing. <laughs> but I stopped by to tell you, <laughs> if it's God's perfect will, <laughs> that's the way it's going to turn out. <laughs> Ain't my Lord all right? <laughs> 
I heard that Jesus went back the third time. And he told the boy, sleep on. My time is at hand. God's will is going to be done. Say yes. Say yes. By that time, here comes Judas with the mob. He kissed Jesus on the cheek. Jesus said, you betray me with a kiss. They took my Lord and my Savior, led him from hall to hall, whipped him all night long, put a crown of thorns on his head. Ain't my Lord all right? And early on that Friday morning, they put an old rugged cross on his back. Don't get too upset with Jesus. It was all the will of God. They marched him up Golgotha's hill, putting nails in his hands, putting nails in his feet. They hung him high and they stretched him wide. And somewhere around the ninth hour, he said, it's finished. Your will is be done. I commend my spirit in your hand. Say yes. Say yes. He died till the sun refused to shine. He died till the moon dripped in blood. I heard that they took him down, laid him in Joseph's tomb, stayed there Friday night, stayed there Saturday night, but early. Early on Sunday morning, it was God's will for him to get up with all power in his hands. Let me show you the benefit of doing God's will. First, you got to hear it. Then you got to obey it. And then you'll receive the blessing. Jesus heard what God said. He obeyed God's will. And the blessing is that God raised him up on that third day. And my brothers and